Welcome to People Love Process. When a company provides specific services, product categories, or events, they may need brand icons designed to represent each to improve visual communication to their intended audience. In this movie, we'll create several icons using simple build methods. So let me take you through that now. Uh, this was a local small business that I branded called New Valley Painting, but unlike their name, they actually do more than just painting. So I told them what they really need to represent that because most people are just gonna default to what their name implies that service icons would uh, help them communicate and market themselves. They could use these on their website. Yes, they do painting. We have an icon for that, but they also paint and stain uh, fencing as well. So we have an icon for that. They do flooring, wood flooring. So we have that. They do tile work. So we have that represented as an icon. They do pressure washing. They remodel bathrooms. They remodel kitchens. And they do carpet installs. So all of those services are represented by these icons to communicate to their audience who might need any one of those services. And of course, this works great in context of vehicle graphics as well. So with Oregon Wild, they have a bunch of activities that the group participates in. One of them is hiking, so we're gonna start with that. And when it comes to icon design, don't be intimidated by drawing. This is the simplest type of drawing. Just think in shapes. So in this case, I didn't want to lock in to a specific gender. So I have a very iconic looking figure here. You, you're not sure if it's a man. You're not sure if it's a woman. It doesn't matter. It represents the activity and nobody's going to miss that. Now, in my drawing, I had a hat, but ultimately I decided I'm going to get rid of that hat and I'll show you. Uh, what I came up with in just a second, but we're going to set this to 15% and it's going to guide our vector building efforts. But once again, think in shapes. It makes the process faster. I'm going to turn on all of our base vectors and these are all of our base vectors. And if you look at this, the torso shape, for example, I use the pin tool. It has no curves in it. It's all straight anchor points, super easy to build. But if you look at the back end, it does have one part that has a round in it because that's where his bottom is and bottoms are rounded and we needed that rounded. Now, I'm also establishing a tolerance for my icons with this first icon, and that is between shapes, between the elements that make up each icon, I want the same continuity from one icon, whether it's hiking or the next icon I'm going to show you, which is camping, and it's going to use the same gap ratio. That gap is a four point gap. So this shape will punch through the backpack and create a gap there. We have these shapes that are going to create gaps here to imply uh, the harness for the backpack and to separate his arm from his torso. And then we're going to put a gap or create a gap that is right now that's between his leg and uh, the foreground leg here. Right now, if I fused all these together, you wouldn't be able to tell. And that's why we're going to use gaps to add that kind of detail without getting overly detailed. Now, I should point out at this point, I would copy all of my artwork here, all the base shapes that I have to create what I want. And I'd make a copy of it and put it in my X layer. And if I go ahead and just turn this off quickly and turn on my X layer, my X layer is like my vector junk drawer. And I do this as a safety precaution for my creative process. I might change my mind later on, come back, and this gives me everything to go from so I don't have to recreate the wheel. It's a good habit to get into. Let's get back to our design here. And we're going to go ahead and offset the torso. So I'll go ahead and go to path and I'll go offset. We're going to do four points. Click OK. We can fill it with this orange. You can see it's on top of the back leg. I'll se select the back leg and we'll go ahead and click minus front on the Pathfinder. And now we have that gap that separates the back leg from the torso. That and it reads correctly now, meaning the back leg looks like it's fewer, uh, further away from the viewer than the foreground leg stepping up on the mountain peak. We'll select these shapes for the inside of the torso. We'll go ahead and um, unite those with the Pathfinder. We can go here 
give it a fill, select the torso shape, punch it through, and you can see those gaps as we're detailing this artwork and uh, improving it. Now, whenever you do a, a Pathfinder method on a shape like this, you end up with two free-floating shapes, but if you select one, it selects the other. Well, that's because it defaults to a group. I always go in and I turn these to compound. You can do that by go to object, compound, make. Notice I have F7 because I don't ever go to the menu. I use the F7 key to establish a compound nature. And it's always going to do that when you use a Pathfinder method. So if I select the backpack and the gap shape, and I go ahead and minus front here again, it's going to turn it into a group. So I just hit F7 to return it to a compound nature. Now I'll just select everything minus the host shape, which is going to be a circular shape there. And we'll go ahead and unite all of these together. Notice it's going to revert back to a group. This is where keyboard shortcuts is nice to set up your own custom command. So it's a one button push. Now I'm going to go back to layers, turn off our drawing. We don't need that now. We can go ahead and select our artwork here and we can get rid of the outline and I'll just fill it in this case uh, with black here like this. And this is where you can use the other um, aspects in Adobe Illustrator to finesse your, um, your iconography. This is where I'll go in and add some rounding. And you can use the corner widget. So if we select these corners of the backpack here, I want all of these kind of the same radius like that. That looks good. We'll select the shoulders here and we'll go ahead and put it in there, maybe on the elbow so it's not rigid and pointy. We'll give a nice little round there. Same thing on his uh, front knee here like that. And if you really wanted to, you can go in and you can round off subtle detail. And this is really what buttons up an icon, in my opinion, and improves uh, the aesthetic of iconography is doing this. So we'll go ahead and just zoom in on what is essentially his hand. And I'm not showing fingers because that's overly detailed. I don't need to do that. But I can just select these two corners and just put subtle rounds in here. Or better yet, I might even select the top of his staff and have all of these be the same kind of subtle round because that adds uh, to the overall um, aspect to the icon design. But then again, I might go here and add a subtle round here as well, like that. So those are the kind of details that I put into a graphic like this. Now, as I was creating this, I was looking at this design because I started it one day and then as I came to it the next day, I opened it up and I was getting ready to jump to the next design I was going to work on for the icon. And I'm going, something's bugging me about this. What's bugging me about it? And I realized he's very rigid. And so... I literally have to get up and pretend like I'm hiking to figure out, oh, you know what? He wouldn't be that erect. He would be kind of leaning forward a little bit. So that's where I went to my X layer and grabbed this artwork and then made edits to it to create new base artwork. So I made him leaning slightly forward here, and this ultimately led to the final black and white artwork, which is shown here. And I think this looks a whole lot more compelling than this. And I even added some detail in the mountain as well. So always be art directing yourself. Always set something aside and come back to it later. You'll find things you can improve on. Uh, but thinking in shapes is one of the easiest ways uh, to handle it. Let's go ahead and move forward to the camping icon here. And again, I have um, a host shape on all these icons, which is gonna be a circle. But in order to create this camping shape, you know, all I did is I just took two ellipse shapes here, took a rectangle shape, if we double click in here, it's just a rectangle with ellipse shapes like that because I didn't want it perfect circular shapes at the end. I wanted them kind of ovalish. And we'll just go ahead and unite it like this. So that's all That's all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this and we'll bring it up here. 
let's see, I'm gonna probably, we'll bring it right up here and then I'll go to the um, rotate tool and this is where I can click to set my orientation and I'm just gonna rotate it downward. So we'll go like this. It's gonna be right around something like that, I think will be fine. And we'll go ahead and fill it like that. So that's how I create the log. That's pretty simple. Um, I have the flame. This is was the hardest part of all the icons to create because it just means you have to do uh, free flowing vectors, but it's not hard. This shape, I want to knock out of this shape like this. We'll go ahead and fill this with black, but let's go ahead and take this shape. We'll clone it, Command-C, Command-F, and we're just going to go ahead and reflect it like this. But I want to make sure this first log is on top, so we'll go bring that forward. And I wanted to have that gap, so I'll go to path, offset path. We have four was the last one we needed. We can color this so you can see the difference. I can select the background log and just knock it out. So we're creating the detail needed for this icon. And of course, I go in on this icon as well. Like where it comes to really sharp points here, this is where... Um, you can use a corner widget to uh, create subtle rounds here. I like using a plugin to do this called Astute Graphics, where you can select this, but you can use a corner widget to do that, but you'd want to select both of them so you get the exact same radius like that. And I'd probably do the same thing on the log just to improve the readability. We can actually do that because I think with one log on top, I think we could select this one and kind of make it look like, you know, it's rounded there. I think that improves that. And we could do the same kind of rounding here, so on. So, oh, I don't want to do all of them, just this one, like that. So that's the kind of detailing I do on icons. I think that icon uh, is looking good. I think our hiking one's looking good. I want to do one more. And this is another way you can approach it, and that is, uh, you can think in shapes, that makes it easier, but sometimes it's good to get reference. So I wanted to do an explorer icon. I was going, what do I do for exploring? I go, well, I could do a compass, but that's kind of boring. And I'm going, what do you do when you explore? Well, I thought of binoculars. So I found a stock photo of binoculars and sometimes uh, this is all you need. It's, it's already kind of a graphic shape, but we're going to use it to simplify from. So this is where I'll set the opacity like this. I'll drop a guide because I don't have to build both sides. I can create it symmetrically. So if I turn on, you can see I've created these shapes here and I'm just following what's shown in the photograph. I'm just not showing all the detail because it's really not needed. I'll take the elements that I need to reflect. I'll copy it, Command C, Command F. Then I'll go to the Reflect tool, find a central anchor point, reflect it over, select this, select the, the knob shapes that are in the middle, unite it like this, and then sample the black we already have. I can turn off this drawing now, and I think this icon is going to work great uh, to represent exploration. And so all of these utilize the same tolerances, that four point gap. And that's what makes icons uh, a family of iconography. So when it's all said and done, these were all the icons we did. And you can see how it goes with the primary brand asset. We colored the host shapes, uh, the brand colors. So we have hiking, we have biking, we have camping, we have climbing, we have exploring, and we have kayaking. So all these are represented well. We have reversed versions of these icons like this. I think those look good. We have the color ones where they can work in context of color on a dark or photographic background as well. Uh, that's easy. You just put an outer shape of white around them or you can do them non-contained. And I almost like these better uh, than the other ones uh, because it doesn't have any container shape. So it just depends on what you're gonna be using it for. Remember, not every company needs iconography. 
but when they do, you want to make sure that the styling of the icons you create complements the primary brand assets so they work well in context of the overall brand system. Thank you for watching People of Process, and as always, I hope this content helps you to improve your own creative process.